Once again, an old PC game gives me issues when trying to record it. So here's one of my favorite JRPGs, Grandia 2. The problem with Armed and Dangerous is that it controlled really weird on the PC, and it was causing my capture card to have a conniption fit. I'm going to review it, but I'll have to wait until I get the original Xbox version. And since I had most of my Grandia 2 review already written, well, it's either this or nothing this week. Now, full disclosure, I did buy this game on a Steam sale last year, but I was contacted by a representative of Gung Ho Entertainment about reviewing the game, and they even gave me a Steam code for it. Also, another full disclosure, I did not beat the game this time around, but I have played it on the Dreamcast multiple times to completion and once on the PlayStation 2, which is by far the worst version as it's poorly optimized for that system. I never played the first Grandia, and that was on the PlayStation 1. My cousins got it for Christmas, and I saw them briefly play it. But luckily, like Final Fantasy, the two games are not related. I picked this game up for my 16th birthday along with Sonic Shuffle and Fantasy Star Online, and we can probably tell which game I regretted. For Dreamcast graphics, they're pretty good for their time and the Anniversary Edition looks great on the PC, being remastered for higher resolutions and running at a very high and consistent frame rate. I only wish that the game was in widescreen. The music sounds really good and I still love the fighting music. The voices are still of Dreamcast quality, sounding almost mono instead of stereo, but there's only so much they could do for that without having the voice actors come back to re-record their lines. As for gameplay, it's a pretty straightforward JRPG. It's from a top-down perspective, and you can control how close a camera zooms in or out and rotate it if needed. The areas are designed in a pretty linear way. You shouldn't get too lost, and the compass will easily point you in the direction you need to go, with a green circle that shrinks or grows if you're getting closer or further away from your destination. However, it's not always accurate. There are times where it's misleading and where you need to go. It is possible to get lost, but you shouldn't be too lost for too long. Combat is turn-based, but it's got some active strategy to it. The enemies will move about on the screen, and your party members will seem to incorporate a hit-and-run strategy, running away after a physical attack. And you have two types of physical attacks, regular and critical. With regular attacks, you hit an enemy twice. A critical does more damage with one hit and knocks the enemy backwards on the time bar. There's special attacks that are unique to each character that use SP. These attacks take a bit to charge up and will greatly knock the enemy back on the time bar. There's magic attacks that can also be used when a character is equipped with a mana egg and they use MP. They also take a bit to charge up and can knock enemies back or help your teammates with buffs and healing. You can also use items to defend or run away. The characters have attacks that can attack a single enemy, an area effect, or all enemies. This can either be strategized really well, but also comes down to the luck of the draw when it comes to the area of effects, as enemies around the selected area can and will move around, resulting in either fewer or more enemies taking damage. And you heard me mention a time bar. What this does is display how much time you and the enemies have until they can attack. When they hit the command line, everything pauses and allows you to choose an action. From there, they proceed to attack or charge up for a larger attack. The larger the amount of damage an attack does, the more the opponent will be pushed back, even canceling their attack if they pass the command line. There are six characters you get to use. Ryoto uses swords, Elena has staffs, Millennia crossbows, Roan daggers, Merig axes, and Tio uses rings. Because Elena and Millennia are characters that share a body, they swap places, and you'll need to re-equip their mana eggs. You almost always have a party of four members once Merig joins the group, and when Tio joins the group, Roan leaves only to rejoin when Merig leaves. Millennia is also the only character with a rage meter. The more damage she takes, the more it builds up until she goes berserk. When that happens, she'll be uncontrollable during this time. She will exhaust all her SP and will attack non-stop. If it happens during a boss fight, it's great, but when it happens during a regular battle, it's a waste because it takes a long time to build up just to waste her SP. This is also one easy JRPG. Like, really easy. The first time I ever played this game, I died twice on a boss halfway through the game only because he hits hard and rather fast. But the final boss sequence, which is a boss rush with only three characters before the final one, was a cakewalk. It's also not that long of a game, but it's just got a slow pace so it feels longer than it really is. For the story, it's actually really good and skip to this point if you want to avoid spoilers. Ryoto is a mercenary and is tasked with taking Elena, the songstress of Granis, the god of good, to an area to perform a ritual with other church members which goes horribly awry. Ryoto is then asked to bring Elena to the Granis Cathedral. Along the way, he meets Millennia, Roan, and Merig. Millennia and Elena swap between each other. After they fight the tongue of Valmar, the evil god, they realize that Millennia is the wings of Valmar and has possessed Elena. 
So they defeat the Eye of Valmar after crash landing on the other side of the Granis Cliffs, and they finally make it to the cathedral and are then tasked with finding the Granis Saber, a sword that split Valmar into pieces. They head to a kingdom that helped Valmar in the fight versus Granis, and once they get there, they find out that Roan is the prince of that kingdom. They then fight the claws of Valmar and Melfis, who is Ryoto's brother and possessed by the horns of Valmar. Roan is made the king and he stays behind. Tio, a robot girl that was possessed by the claws, joins the group. They make their way to Ryoto's village. Ryoto was cast out because of his brother stealing a sword and killing people. The group ends up killing Melfis, but then the horns jump to Ryoto. Millennia seals them inside of him because taking them will kill him. This way, Ryoto can't be possessed by the horns. They then go to Merrick's village where the Granis Saber is supposed to be. But Selene, Pope Zero's minion, revives the body of Valmar around the sword. They go inside and destroy the body, and the Saber is actually a spaceship. They go back to the cathedral, and Selene becomes the heart of Valmar. After the heart is defeated, Pope Zero reveals his whole plan. Elena was supposed to absorb all the parts of Valmar, and that Granis actually died during the war, and it was Valmar who was victorious, although he was split into several pieces. Zara kidnaps Elena and says that humanity must now bow before Valmar and takes her to Valmar's moon. The group takes the Granis Saber ship to the moon and rescues her. Merrick sacrifices himself to save the group and Roan rejoins them once they're back on Earth. Valmar's moon crashes into the cathedral and creates a new Valmar body. Then Ryoto finds the true Granis Saber. They then go into the newly created body of Valmar, find Zara, who is the will of Valmar, and destroys him. The group then all go their separate ways. Roan then decides to find and catch up with him. Millennia, who is free of Valmar, is a teacher. Tio is a nurse, and Elena is a traveling singer. Ryoto is missing, but the last scene of the game is him burying the true Granis Saber before he decides to return to the world. If you're the type of person that likes those movies where it's God versus the Devil or something like that, you'll probably really like the story this game has to offer, because I think it's really well written. The characters are voiced well, and the actors do a really good job of portraying the characters. While I didn't finish the game this time around, and I wanted to, but I still love this game's story, which is what really kept me going. Sure, the combat isn't the most innovative, but there's some really decent strategy to it for its time, allowing you to think and plan your moves. And yeah, it's incredibly easy even if you play it wrong like I do, like giving powerful items to characters that really can't take advantage of them. But it's still a fun game to this day, and if I had a list of my favorite JRPGs, this would be in the top three. And if you haven't played this game, you should. Get the Dreamcast or PC versions. Stay away from the PlayStation 2 one unless you're desperate. And I'm glad that September is over as every game that I had scheduled except for one was a pain in the butt to try and run and needed substitution. Hopefully it'll be smooth sailing from here.